It only took two hours to find the one line of code that fixed my card events. But before I delve into the bug, let's get everything else set up. Most of the individual actions, like adding and removing cards, are extremely simple. You can use the Show Card and Obtain effect to add any card to the player's deck by passing it in, as well as the X and Y coordinates on the screen of where the animation should start. This goes in the effect list using abstractdungeon.effectlist.add. You can remove a card in the player's deck that you have a reference to by passing it into abstractdungeon.player.masterdeck.removeCard. The question is how to get a reference to the card. You could of course just iterate through it until you find what you want. I made a copy of the master deck, shuffled it, and grabbed the first two entries for my random upgrade test, but this methodology doesn't let the player choose a card. For this, we need to use the grid selection screen. The grid selection screen is opened using abstract dungeon dot grid select screen dot open, which has a lot of parameters. The first parameter is the card group to show. For adding cards to your deck, this can come from anywhere, though I'll walk through a simple method later on. For options involving the player's deck, you don't want to just pass the master deck in. This would provide bottled and unpurgeable cards. We need to filter this list down. But the card group class already has a function to do this. Since our initial example is removing a card, we want to get purgeable cards from the master deck. We then want to pass this group to the static card group function get group without bottled cards. The group that is returned is the group we can now give to the grid select screen dot open function. We first need to pass in the card group and the number of cards to choose. Next, the string tip message for the bottom of the screen to remind players what they're doing. A series of boolean values ends the parameters. No, this isn't an upgrade. No, this isn't a transform. No, the player can't cancel this option once the screen is up. And yes, this is for purging a card. These flags modify some internal display properties, though I haven't done any serious analysis of the grid's code. The grid will now open on the next frame, so let's do anything else we need to do in the button effect function and move on. The update function will handle the results of this process. We need to start with an if statement with two checks. Is abstract dungeon dot screen up not true? And abstract dungeon dot grid select screen dot selected cards dot is empty also not true. The first checks to see if the screen is up. This will be true both before and after we use it. So the second question is to make sure we've used the screen. This will only be true when the player has made a selection on the screen. We can now access the list of selected cards using abstract dungeon dot grid select screen dot selected cards. For our removal, we can grab the zeroth element of the selected cards and pass that into the removal function. If we have multiple things we might do with the grid selection, then we'll also want additional boolean variables for each option, which we can set to true as needed in the button effect function. At this point, we can end this event with open map. 
And this is where the trouble begins. The game would often, but not always, crash on opening the map screen. Worse yet, the Java stack trace didn't make any sense, ending in abstract cards, can use, and card playable functions. Which makes even less sense when you see that the null exception caught comes from checking the monster group for the room. Why? Apparently, this is because the game is checking the status of the player hand as it opens the map. This is likely due to testing the event in the same room as an encounter, so it wouldn't happen if we had encountered the event randomly. But just to be safe, we can clear the hand with player.hand.clear. Now that we have that sorted out, let's look at the more interesting options. Transforming a card involves removing the card to transform from the deck and asking Abstract Dungeon to do the transformation, then putting the transformed card into the deck. With the card chosen, remove card from the player's master deck. Since we still have a reference to the card, we can call Abstract Dungeon dot transform card, passing in the card. Next, we can get the transformed card using Abstract Dungeon dot get transformed card. Finally, we can use the show card and obtain effect to give the card to the player. Giving the player a duplicate card is not difficult either. We can make the copy by calling make stat equivalent copy on the card. We'll need to clear the in bottle flags for flame, lightning, and tornado, then show card and obtain effect. For my upgrade example, I decided to pick two cards at random. We can get the card group easily with get upgradable cards, but Java's collection class can't shuffle the contents of the card group, and the group has no randomization methods. We can get an array list from the group by using the group property. We can shuffle this, then grab the first two and upgrade them. Making a custom list of cards is something that, while not difficult, is rather lengthy. It's the sort of thing you might want to write a helper function for, but there's enough options that I'm not prepared to design a dedicated function yet. I do recommend separating this out from your button functionality, though, to make things easier to read. First, you'll need to make a new card group of type unspecified. The other options include discard, deck, and card pool, but our group is temporary. We will populate our group in a for loop that will run for the number of cards we want. Generate a random card using abstract dungeon.getCard, passing in abstract dungeon.rollRarity and then make copy of the card we got. We may have already added a copy of this card to the list, 
So if we want to avoid duplicates, we'll need to check the card's ID against the ID of each card already in the group. If we found a duplicate, roll for a new card and try again. Finally, before we add the card to the group, show it to each relic the player has. We do this in a for loop and calling on preview relic on each relic, passing our card to each. This is for things like the eggs that upgrade cards automatically. Finally, add the card to our group and perform the next iteration of our larger loop. You can do additional checks during this process, like only keeping skills. I've been doubting myself and this series recently. Fewer and fewer people are watching each subsequent video and to those who have stuck with me, thank you. I don't intend to stop making videos, but I want to know if you guys thought I should remake some of the earlier videos as proper tutorials. Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to quickly cover potions, hopefully in less than a month, and then start looking into encounters.